You guys want to work on a go-kart? Got one here. No idea what it is. Some kind of no-name China special. It belongs to a regular customer of mine. He asked me to take a look at it because it has no spark. I guess he replaced the battery, the spark plug, and I forget what else, but it still has no spark. So, yeah, let's see what we can do. Yeah, I don't know anything about this engine. He said it's 107 cc's. To me, it looks like a clone of like a Honda ATC engine, like an ATC 90 or ATC 110. It's a little transmission and then air-cooled four cycle with the piston basically horizontal. See, it's got a little cap there. That would be where the camshaft is. And the little plug on the top is where you adjust the valves. So I don't know, this thing's only, I don't know, a couple years old, I think. Oh, he replaced the coil. See, it's got a new coil on it. I have no idea who made this thing. It says Tau Motors on it, whatever that means. Well, first things first, I guess let's verify that it has no spark. Spark plug's loose. Well, this one was laying in the seat. I don't know what the deal is with this one. So we'll try it first. Okay, now we'll put that right where you guys can't see it and see what happens. Nothing. Okay, so it definitely has no spark. It sure sounds like it's turning over slow. What do I know? Uh, let's try something real quick here. I'm just gonna put my finger over the spark plug hole. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's not doing anything. It's not turning the engine. <laughs> oh, did he replace the starter? I think he did. Looks like it's been tampered with. Let's check into that. Well, it looks like three bolts we can have the starter out. So let's just pop it out and see, see what, what's going on here. I think it's gonna be a case of the parts cannon strikes again. Why would you replace the starter if it didn't have spark? Must be more of the story than what I'm getting. <sighs> All right, folks. I don't know where we left off. I got interrupted several times. I had to do an insurance audit. That was fun. Anyway, I pulled the starter off. I believe it has been replaced. And it's got a sprocket on it here. It's a chain drive starter. If you look right here where my finger is, there's the chain. I don't believe the chain was ever hooked back up. So it was just freewheeling in there. Or if it was hooked up, it wasn't, it threw it off. Anyway, that's only part of the problems. The wiring is all messed up. I don't know what happened here, if I'm being set up or, or what's going on. So there's a red wire here that runs from the starter and it goes right over here to the negative terminal of the battery. If you look at the positive terminal of the battery, it even has this little boot that says a positive on it. That runs down to the starter solenoid. You can't see it, but it's right down here. So that part seems right. And then the other wire from the starter solenoid. Oh, here we go. There's the starter solenoid right there. So the positive, ooh, it's all melted. Anyway, the po one side of it goes to the positive side of the battery. The other side of it right here is actually connected to this bolt on the side of the engine. And <laughs> it has a little boot here with a negative sign on it. So I think what happened, you guys tell me if this is a sound theory. I think what happened is he disconnected this wire right here at the starter solenoid. And is that right? Yeah. 
So this red wire here from the starter that goes to the negative side of the battery, it should be hooked up right here. And this wire right here should be hooked up to the battery. So he's got those backwards. Now I'm trying to figure out if that will cause, that would cause a catastrophic problem. Because the starter is isolated. So essentially the starter is running in positive ground right now, which the starter doesn't care which way, right? Unless it's a permanent magnet starter. Ooh, I didn't think about that. If it's a permanent magnet starter, it could be spinning the wrong way. All right, we'll assume it's a regular starter. And in that way, it wouldn't matter which way the volt, the, the uh, polarity is on the wiring. What about the ignition? I'm trying to think. I don't know. So the ignition would be current sharing with the with the starter motor, so it wouldn't have anything, there wouldn't be any power unless you hit the starter solenoid the way it's hooked up right now. I don't know, I think we're gonna have to put it back the way it's supposed to be and see see what we get. I gotta recrimp this terminal, looks like it's melted itself. Hopefully he hasn't blown up a diode in the alternator, or regulator or whatever it uses. And hopefully we haven't blown out any CDI ignition parts. I don't know, if it has CDI ignition, it doesn't need a battery to run. Anyway, I guess, I don't know where, you, where to start here. Let's see if we can get the starter installed correctly. And then, then we can turn the engine over and we can figure out what's going on with the, the spark at that point. Yeah, the guy who owns this machine is a really nice guy, but he ain't no mechanic. Technically, if I touch this to that, the starter should turn the engine over. Uh, is that going to be a problem? Maybe we should fix the wiring first. Alright, so I think the way it's supposed to be hooked up is positive side of the battery to one side of the solenoid. And then this this red wire must feed, well it goes through a fuse pack so it must feed the, I don't know, whatever else it has. It has a horn I see and some other doodads. Like so. And then this red wire from the starter motor should be hooked up to the other one. Why is it a different nut? Don't know. Okay, that's that part. Now this cable goes to the negative side of the battery. Like so, and then this little cap goes over that terminal. Like so, now, if I connect this to the engine ground, should be able to crank it over. Okay, good. Now I can put this cover back together and we should be good to go. All right, everything's back together. Let's see if we have some spark. Oh yeah, good spark. Imagine that. Okay, we'll put the original spark plug back in and see if it'll run. <laughs> Here, let me just choke it real quick. Oops. 
All right, well, that wasn't on the repair list, so let's find another way. Fuel shut off? Yes. Because it's on. Doesn't have gas in it. Appears too, yes. See any gas in there? Mm, maybe. Oh, let's give her a little sniff of the green can here. Problem. It's not getting any gas. Float valve stuck, maybe. All right, let's get into the carburetor. Kind of figured we were headed there anyway. Do, 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 do. I maintain that it's impossible to make an interesting video about rebuilding a carburetor. So, I don't know how much this I'll actually show, but if I find some juicy problems, I'll be sure to let you know. All right. Appears to be a standard Makuni clone here, slide carburetor. Just the Japanese version. Well, the float's not stuck. Doesn't look too bad. That seven millimeter, probably. I don't know, it doesn't look too bad. Oh, baby. Well, pretty simple carburetor. I will hose it down, clean it up, put it back together, and we'll see what happens.
Didn't change anything. Still got a problem somewhere. Maxwell, are you supposed to be up there, buddy? Well, there you go, folks. Fixing a Chinese go-kart. Pretty simple job, really. I'd say the problem was just a few too many shots with the old parts cannon. And I have no idea what the original problem actually was before he replaced the battery, the starter, the coil, the spark plug, and whatever else. Doesn't matter. Runs good, drives good, so we're going to ship it. This thing's pretty fun. Obviously, I'm way too big for it, but... You know, back when I was 12 years old, I would have chewed off my own arm for something like this. So, yeah. We'll be on the lookout for one of these. I've got a soon-to-be five-year-old. He looked pretty good in that thing. In fact, I haven't been able to keep him out of it. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.